one week left until the June SAT. And in this video, I'll be going over the best study routine for the June SAT so you guys can get a 1600 on your SAT. So I'll break this video down into four main strategies to use for your study routine to make sure that you have the optimal best study routine possible so you can get that 1600 because we don't want anything less than 99 percentile scorers so the first tip is you have basically five days right so you want to be practicing math and reading every day now you guys might be saying whoa 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 whoa, whoa. math and reading every day isn't that too much no okay there's five days left these five days should be your best days of studying you ever have done even if you've been studying for so long or if you just started studying today i want you guys to be studying math and reading every single day i would say two hours to three hours for each topic so yes you might be spending anywhere from four to six maybe even seven to eight hours depending on how hard you're going and this does sound like a lot of work but it is necessary some of you guys are probably procrastinators you might not have studied the math section well enough and that is why i would like to thank today's sponsor my sat math course my ST math course has all the topics, tips, tricks you need for the ST math section all packed into six hours. So you can literally finish this course in a day and become a master at the ST math section. So be sure to check it out. Link in the description below. By the way, the reviews and feedback have been amazing for it. So I highly recommend it. Use code first 100 for a 25% discount. Now for reading, I unfortunately can't bless you all with the course. But what I can say is spam Khan Academy for the ST reading passages because Khan Academy works for ST reading. ST math is kind of weak now because you know the whole college board stuff. But ST reading is still really stellar, okay? So I'm actually doing the argument passages, the history passages, the narrative, the informative, every single passage possible, every single field for ST reading and ST writing because that way you're exposing yourself to as many possible problems you might be facing on the entire ST exam. So I touched on this earlier, but you need to study four to six hours a day, okay? Now this is based on progress, right? If you start studying today, you might be having to hit that eight hour mark of studying per day, which is a lot. That probably means you can't go outside, you can't go watch the movies, you can't go on youtube unless it's my videos you can't do a lot of fun stuff but it's just five days of straight grinding to make sure you get that high score on sat and then you can chill all you want right then you don't care enjoy your summer and just have fun but you need to be studying at least four hours a day because it's a good sweet mark that way you're spending time on math and reading and that way you're also splitting up time properly and four hours is also good because let's say you take a practice test right That's, that might take two to three hours after that you can review your mistakes and deep dive into everything you missed and that extra hour or the extra two hours you have after you take your practice test. Now, speaking of practice tests, this is the third main strategy, and that is to take three practice tests from now until doomsday. And doomsday is obviously the day of the SAT. Now, the last practice test that you take should be on the Thursday before your SAT, so this Thursday. And the reason is because you do not want to take a practice test on Friday, okay? You want to keep a light Friday, I'll touch on that later in the video, but you want your last practice test to be on Thursday. So let's say today is Monday when you're watching this video or Tuesday. What you want to do is you want to have practice today, the day you watch this video, a practice test tomorrow and one the day after. And the reason is because that way you can monitor your progress and brush up any of the last minute mistakes you are making on the SAT, right? Let's say you make a linear equation uh, mistake on the first practice test. You can brush that up, look at your mistakes, deep dive into it, make sure you don't mess up linear equation problems again after you find your mistake. The next practice test, you should see that you're no longer making linear equation problems, right? And this way, each practice test is like a final screening of yourself. And it's like ironing out any last minute mistakes you might have for the upcoming SAT. Highly recommend it. And one of the best things is it will tell you where you are on your SAT journey, like what score you can probably expect when you take the SAT. Now, I'm saying take three tests for a reason, because one test is not enough. Some tests might have a bad curve, some tests might have a nice curve. That's why I take three different practice tests. I recommend two, six, and eight on the College Board uh, release practice test, uh, simply because that's the ones that have like the most tricks that you can apply, right? And if you're able to apply enough math tricks for the math section, that means you probably have matched the math section. If you have not, be sure to check my SD math course, as I said. And for SD reading, those practice tests also are pretty good. Uh, they have a nice blend of uh, history passages, science passages, and others. Now, I touched on this earlier, but my fourth key strategy is to keep a light Friday. Um, this is something I've practiced for any major exam, right? I've always tried to keep it as light as possible on my last day of study. And first of all, you guys should not be studying the day of the SAT, all right? Do not wake up Saturday morning and be like, all right, let me study for like two, three hours. Let me wake up like five hours early, study up until the exam. You're gonna fry your brain. Your brain's really gonna explode the moment you see your uh, test booklet, all right? You wanna keep your brain energized, keep it fresh, right? Like, imagine you have a soccer game coming up at 6 p.m. Would you be training from 1 p.m. to 5.45 p.m., hard, like nonstop, running around the track, running around the field, kicking the ball? No, you would like, you know, energize. You would take like a nice sweet break, 
maybe you sleep a little like you want to make sure your brain is fully energized and your body's ready for this upcoming three hour exam so you're literally about to sit and take and you're gonna hate it obviously like, no one likes SAT. who has fun taking sat what are you weird no right so that's why i'm saying just keep a you know a light friday uh i would still recommend um studying anywhere from two to three hours um don't take a practice test study for two to three hours that's personally what i did uh like i said brush up on any last minute mistakes my ST math notes, I have those. You might want to review those a lot on Friday just because it covers everything. So, you know, use that, use the course. Um, don't exhaust yourself. Do not binge study. Like I said, if you binge study, you're going to fry your brain out and you're going to keep your mind nice and refreshed. And that's probably one of the biggest things I can say. And now my last strategy, and this strategy is to just keep a cool mind. All right. SAT is just the SAT. It's an exam that's three hours. Most colleges, you know, kind of consider it optional. I mean, now some colleges are trying to readapt like MIT. So it's becoming very relevant once again, but it's still an exam, guys. The college admission process is a holistic process. There's so many things that go into it. So having a subpar SAT score is not gonna kill your chances. I mean, it might kill your chances of going and getting to Harvard, but still, uh, it's not gonna kill your chances for most colleges, right? So just relax, okay? And and keep a cool head. Don't think that the SAT is end all be all. It's not what defines you. It is not. Do anything for your life in the long term. Trust me, once you get in college, you will give two poops about the SAT. So just keep a cool head and just relax. And that is the five strategies that you guys can use to have the best SAT June study routine you possibly can have.